Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about VPN routers. Now VPN routers themselves have some pros and some cons. Do you need a VPN router? Should you be using one in 2021? Well, VPN routers are really good for people who want to access VPN technology on devices other than something than a smartphone or a TV. VPN routers are good to give VPN access to specific devices like PS4s, um, Roku sticks, some smart TVs and stuff like that that don't have the Android operating system that let you install VPN on them. This can be good for unblocking Netflix geo restrictions, um, letting you access specific services like Hulu, BBC iPlayer, um, US based services if you're outside of the US. Not only that, but VPN routers are really cool and that you could connect to them with your phone or any other device and just immediately get VPN usage without having to connect to a VPN clown on every single device. So for people who always want to be using VPN on all their devices, VPN router is a pretty good way to do that. That said, there are some things about VPN routers that are a little bit different than using a VPN on your computer. Number one is that when you use a VPN on your computer, it's able to take full advantage of your PC's power. Most p computers nowadays are plenty capable to handle the kind of backend um, power required to run a VPN to run the encryption itself. So it will impact your speeds on computer a little bit. Um, sometimes uh, the fastest VPNs you can get like only maybe 10 to 30% and that range degradation of your speeds, which isn't a big deal at all. You'll still be able to get really fast downloads, really good streaming. Pretty much you won't even notice it at all. However, with VPN routers, they're using much less processing power. So they have a definitely an impact on your speed um, more so. Now, it kind of depends, again, on the router you get, how much money you want to spend, um, what kind of router you want to have for your situation. Obviously, bigger routers, more expensive routers are going to probably give you better speeds, but they're going to be... Um, objectively kind of they kind of just look worse in a lot of cases not only that but it'll be less mobile you won't be able to take them around depending on how you're traveling with them or something like that if you get a smaller router it's gonna be more travel friendly more portable um, it's probably gonna look a bit a little bit better less of an eyesore around the house and it's gonna be cheaper but it's gonna give you definitely some speed decreases so it kind of depends on your use case if you want to use a VPN router or not but I do think they do have some use cases for the people that want to use them. And ultimately, some of the speed decrease and stuff like that you'll get, as long as you have pretty fast internet, um, they still will be perfectly usable for the uses that you would want to use one anyways. So even though you're going to get a little bit of a speed decrease by using a VPN router, most likely what you're going to be doing is streaming or something like that, um, or even gaming, and it should be fast enough to do that if you have decent internet. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing how to use WireGuard on your router and get things set up and running. Now, it kind of depends on the router you're using, of course. Different um, routers do support WireGuard, some other ones don't. In fact, most of the routers, um, like Linksys and Asus and some of these bigger names, um, they generally do support like going into the settings itself and just installing an OpenVPN configuration, and it's pretty easy to actually do that. However, I would suggest using WireGuard if possible because my top rated VPN does support WireGuard configurations now that you could pretty much install on VPN routers. Again, not every VPN router does that, but I'm going to be providing you some VPN routers that do let you install WireGuard on them. In this video, I'm going to be using a GLI mini router and I'll put a link for that in the description down below because it's very easy, it's very portable. Um, it's very cheap and it works really good with VPN providers. Now, like I said before, there is going to be a significant speed decrease, but for me, I'm still able to get 60 megabits per second with a speed test and around um, 6 to 10 megabytes per second download with a torrent file. So it's still perfectly suitable for most needs, just not really that great for really heavy duty downloading that you might want to do on your PC. So what does the process look like for putting WireGuard on a router? Well, let's go ahead and show you. So pretty much what I did here is I went to my router's kind of login page and you'll be able to find this usually on a sticker on your router. Now, once you go into here, usually there's going to be some kind of VPN section. Sometimes they'll have WireGuard support. Now, these ones specifically have WireGuard support, which is nice so much. So in fact that you can even add a profile um, from like, say, Azure VPN. I don't know why they support Azure VPN necessarily. 
Um, but yeah, like they support, this one supports Azure VPN and Molvad. I'm not really sure why Azure. Molvad, I could see they were kind of pretty early on. Um, maybe they just kind of set this up or worked with GL um, INET to input <laughs> that kind of way to do it easily. Um, but for my purposes, pretty much what I did is I copied and pasted the code here from the configuration. Um, and then you pretty much add it and then you just connect to it. It's as simple as that. I'll show you how to get the code right now. Now, which VPN specifically should you use setting up WireGuard on these kind of routers? Well, like I said, they did have a couple options there, but I prefer to do the manual kind of method by inputting the code or the, um, just the configuration here. That seems to be the easiest way for me since it doesn't always accept that many different options. Like I said, it only had a couple different ones here. Depending on the router, of course, it could be less. Um, so basically what we're gonna be using is TorGuard VPN. It's the top rated VPN on the channel and the one I would recommend using um, if you're looking to put VPN on a router, especially WireGuard. So pretty much what you're gonna do with TorGuard is you're gonna go to my account. So once you're logged in, you're pretty much going to go to Tools, Config Generator, go to WireGuard, and you're pretty much gonna pick the server you want. Um, so this is really cool with TorGuard. It lets you enter in custom IPs you could have purchased from the streaming bundle. This is going to be used if you want to unblock specific services like the USA version of Netflix. You're going to buy the streaming bundle with a US IP and you get to pick another one from six other locations. It's a little bit more pricey to get the streaming bundle to give you that kind of ability to enter in those IPs. Um, it's going to be around $11 a month or $60 a year or around $100 for two years. Um, if you use code Netflix, that's going to give you that good pricing plan for 50% off. So that is really good to get those um, streaming IPs and you're just going to enter in that in right here. Makes it very easy to do so. Enter in your login name and password for the VPN client credentials, not the website credentials, but the client credentials, which you'll find here in your account settings. Um, you know, you could find that right around my services and change the password there if you want to for the client. So I didn't enter in the right information, but it will generate the config and pretty much all you're going to do just copy and paste that and then paste it here click add and it's going to add it and it's going to connect now one thing you got to be careful with is make sure that you're not connected from your computer to the another kind of modem to give you that ethernet capability because even if you're connected to that vpn router with wi-fi it's going to prioritize the ethernet so make sure to only be connected to the router on your computer um, to test out to see if it's working. I just kind of threw that out there because that was problematic for me. I was like, why isn't it working? I unplugged the ethernet and only connected to Wi-Fi, and then it was working. So that was really cool. So as you can see right now, I am connected to TorGuard's WireGuard Seattle, not using a custom IP, streaming IP or anything like that. And these are the speeds I'm getting. Again, quite a bit of a speed degradation for me. I usually get around a gig, but perfectly usable for 4K streaming, pretty much anything around the house. And keep in mind, I am using a tiny, tiny router that's only around $50. So pretty good, right? I did a speed test with this as well. I got around, like I said, eight to 10 megabytes a second downloading a Ubuntu file. So those are kind of speeds you can get with this specific mini router setup with WireGuard. However, it's still perfectly suitable for gaming. I was using it on gaming. I didn't even notice um, that it was on. I've kind of forgot that it's on. So, you know, it's perfectly usable for most things you're gonna be doing. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. Let me know down in the comments down below if you like this one. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know down in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Check vpntierless.com for any kind of VPN rankings you're curious about. Click on some of the links to help support the channel. And I'll see you on the Discord and in the next video very soon.